Hello. Um, in this session, I would like to share some of the activities I do with young learners when teaching online. So that you know, next week I will be doing a session on using Google Slides. For a long time, I've been using PowerPoint, but the last few years I've been using Google Slides and I really like them. And I would like to show you some tricks that you can do when planning and teaching online with Google Slides, but that's going to be next week. Now we're going to talk about teaching young learners. The first thing I'd like to mention is that the session is mainly for students between the ages of 6 and 11, uh, young learners. We could be teaching very young learners, younger students or babies, or teenagers or adults. Most of the activities you can do with primary students. Some of them you could do with preschool and sometimes as well with teenagers or adults if you change the content. But the activity itself, the technique, you could use with other age groups as well. The first activity I'd like to share with you is picture dictation. This is basically where you imagine a picture and you detect it to the students and the students draw the picture with you while you're detect detecting uh, the picture. Then they can color in the picture. Again, you can dictate the colors as well, like, oh, the house is blue and orange, or you can let them color in as they wish. And also if the students, if they can write and if they can read and write, they can label the picture, they can write the names next to the uh, objects. Uh, the first thing I do when I do picture dictation is obviously you've done colors with the students. So you play your color song that you've been doing in every class. My favorite color is blue. Uh, then you revise uh, vocabulary that you want to integrate in the picture. What's this? Oh, yes, it's a house. Look at the windows. How many windows point to the door? Uh, what's this? The students guess and you go through tree. What's this? Is this a tree? No, it's a flower. What's this? Oh, it's a dog. Uh, what's this? Is this a tree? Could be, is it a flower? Oh, it's a cloud. Oh, it's a sun. So you go through the pictures that you want the students to draw. Uh, bird, car, uh, people, family, best friends. And when, when you've gone through the vocabulary, they take a piece of paper and then you start dictating the picture. Uh, and again, here you can let the students draw more or less. Uh, if you say, for example, let's draw a house. You can let them draw a house however they want, or you can give them more details, draw a big house, a small house, a, a house on the right, on the left, um, however you want to do it, depending on the age and the level. When I do it, I like to, I let the students uh, decide whether the house is big or small and where about in the picture it is. Uh, then you continue, oh, there's also a tree, draw a tree. Again, you tell them where to draw the tree or they decide. And there's a car and there's, there are some people, there's a family, there's a sun and what's in the sky, there's a cloud and birds and you can go as, as far as you want. Uh, then you can, again, when once they've, they have a picture, you can start coloring and again, you can tell them what color everything is or they can decide. Or what I really like to do with the students is like, what color is the car? And I will ask one of the students, Juan, what color is the car? And I would elicit something like the car is red. I say, okay, the car is red for everybody. So let's color the car red. And then look at the flower. Uh, and then you ask another student about the color of the flower and everybody colors the same way. It depends how you want to do it. It's more than anything so that we all go at the same pace. If they do it, uh, if they do it however they want to do it, some students will do it really quickly, some students will take forever. 
And again, if the students can read and write, they can label the picture. They can write flower next to the flower. You can help them, obviously, with the spelling. And, and this is uh, a picture that I did uh, a few days ago with a group of kids. I went through the whole process, and this was, you know, what one of the students did, and the others were similar. Mm. So this is picture dictation. You can do it with older students. Instead of drawing a picture like this, they could draw a kitchen with microwaves and fridge and ovens. They can draw a city, um, a bedroom with more details. Yeah, it depends on the level and the age of the students. Uh, yeah, I would do the ABC song, the alphabet, if I want them to label the picture. I would go through the alphabet first to make sure that let's write flower next to the flower. How do you spell flower? Uh, we're going to look at some activities that we can do with songs because when we teach primary students, I think we all use songs one way or another. Um, and TPR, total physical response, for me is essential uh, if you're teaching face-to-face -face or if you're teaching online. You want the students to do something with their body to respond to your task. In this case, it's a song. I'm going to play a, the weather song that we do in class. And every time you hear a weather word like sunny or rain or rainy or windy, the students will have to, and then you decide. They can stand up, they can jump, they can touch their head, they can touch their ear, they can point to their computer, they can point to the floor. Some, somehow they need to respond. It's a good opportunity for them to, to stand up and do something, yeah? So in this case, for example, I don't know, I'm going to touch my head. Okay, you get the point, yeah? Again, with students, I think it's, it's a good idea that they stand up and maybe jump or, or do something or, you know, shake a little bit. Another thing that I do with songs with young learners is before we get into the more details, is like, listen to the song and count the animals. Count the, the weather words. How many can you hear? In this case, we're going to listen to a song and we're going to count the foods and drinks that we hear, yeah, individually. I, I will start with the students probably to help them, and then they can count. Little Smart Planet presents Obviously, you're doing this kind of vocabulary with your students. In this song, as you can see, you have the lyrics. Uh, you can play the song without any words, or you can play the song with words. It depends. In this case, I found this song that I like, and I think for students who are in first, second, third of primary, it might be a good idea to have the words to help them with reading and writing. But 
obviously you may want to play the song without any written forms. So how many foods can, and drinks can you count? Well, depending on whether you say vegetables is one and fruit, but 11 or 13, something like that would be fine. Yes, so I just want the students to listen and count those key words. Another thing that you can do later is go through some of the language, at least it, what's this, it's milk, what's all bananas, peppers, cake. Again, if the students can, cannot read or write, you give them the pictures only. If they're reading and writing, you may want to include the words as well. And what you can do now is listen to the song again and put those pictures in order. As they can, as they come along in the song. So uh, I would have the song here and the pictures, and I would play the song again. And maybe when the students can see one of the pictures, they can put their hand up and say, Stop! And they say, uh, Peppers, number one, or milk, number one. It depends how you want to set this up. You can play the song and let the students listen again and go through the pictures and try to decide which is first, which is second or third. Uh, I am going to play the song. Uh, I'm not going to play the whole song, but I would play the song without doing anything. And say, okay, now you have to do it. Little the Smart Planet presents So the idea would be to listen to the song and now pay more attention to those words. Uh, with the students who can read and write, you may want them to write the words in the notebook. If there are students in second of primary, third of primary, or above, you can say, okay, write milk, bananas, peppers, and cake. And when they do the listen and order, they could have the words in the notebook and they can listen and write the number next to the words. If the students uh, are not reading or writing, you just may want to give them the pictures. Uh, and then what I would do, uh, again, I would say, okay, what's number one? I would list it from the students uh, and say, yes, number one is bananas. Uh, what's number two? Again, or one thing that you can do with the slides, you can play the song and at the same time, you can number the pictures, which is really cool. Okay, so you can play the song and at the same time uh, tell them the number of the pictures. Another thing that you can do is similar depending on the age of the students. If the students are in second of primary or above, you can say, go through some sentences, read them. Okay, I love bread. Yes, with everybody, they, they read the sentences. I love apples. You go through the sentences, make sure that they come onto the uh, slide one at a time so that it's easier for the students to follow you. And then again, listen and order the sentences, yeah? like the activity before, but instead of pictures, so you can have pictures, you can have single words, or you can have short sentences. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh, 
you would check with the students what's number one, what's number two, and say, uh, what's number one? Yes, I love apples. So one is sentence B, one B. To check answers, you can play the song, and at the same time, you can show them the answer on the slide, yeah? Like this, for example. <laughs> Okay, and you continue like this. And then you can ask the students, uh, you can ask them a number, number two, and, in, and they give you the sentence, I love oranges. Number four, I love bread. Number one, I love apples. Mm. Another thing that you can do, you can give them four pictures, but they need to find the spy. One is not in the song. They need to listen again and find the picture that's not in the song. Again, you would play the song and then they would be looking at the pictures and decide which is the spy. And I say, did you hear vegetables? Yes. Did you hear orange juice? Yes. Did you hear bananas? Yes. You hear pears? No, this is the spy. And now you can give them another set of pictures to find the spy. If they can do it without the song, great. If they need to listen to the song again, you play again. You can play a spy with pictures. You can play a spy with single words. Which words are in the song? Which one isn't? Or you can play a spy with short sentences. I love pizza, for example. That's not in the song. So you can give them four sentences and they need to find the sentence that's not in the song to practice more reading. Now you can get them to listen to the song and draw or write. Mm -hmm. uh, I will stop the song and when I stop, you have to draw the picture or write the word or draw and write depending on the age of the students. You could even get them to write the sentence, mm, for example. Little Smart Planet presents Yes, you would stop there and say they can either draw apples, they can write apples, or they can write I love apples. Obviously, you would do an example with them. You would continue. Um, let me see. Well, uh, you would continue with the song and you would stop. And when it stops, uh, the students have to draw all right. You can ask them more questions. For example, what colors do you have? We were, we were listening for food and drinks. That's, that was the, the target language. But did you hear any colors? What colors did you hear? Yes. Did you see any, any animals? I didn't see any animals the first few times I, I, I went through the song. And then I saw the fish. Yes, I saw some fish. And did you see a rocket? Yes, I did. I saw a rocket. There's a rocket at the end of the song. You know, so you can ask other questions about the song. You can get them to make sentences. I love, and elicit from the students, I love apples, for example. And then you can get the students maybe to write the sentence in the notebook. Again, I would do this with the students who are in second of primary or above. First of primary, it depends. Maybe I wouldn't get them to write sentences. Uh, more, I love, see if they remember more sentences from the song. Yes, I love oranges. 
and again you can get them to write the sentence maybe or what sentence is this can you make a sentence peppers are green yes and this is a bit more difficult uh, but maybe a student's is second of primary first of primary they can do it uh, infantil maybe they can do it orally i drink water mm -hmm. or this one i drink milk every morning yes uh, again you can get the students to to write some sentences or just come up with with sentences another thing that you can do is show them a sentence like that and they have to put it together they have to put it in order to come up with one of the sentences from the song you can show them again and hide it show them a little bit longer when they have the sentence they put their hand up and then you call one of the students again with the students who are a bit older you may want to get them to write the sentence in the notebook uh, write the, the sentence in the chat and the first student to write the correct sentence is great wonderful or you can just they can say the sentence orally i drink milk every morning uh, you can show them a sentence with one extra word to make it a bit more difficult obviously this would be for for a student you know confident students is like you need to make the sentence but you have one word too many mm -hmm. yes i eat bread every day that's in the song yeah so you don't need to use green so that would be the song yeah green is the spy again uh what else can you do you can sing along obviously once you've gone through the lesson uh through the song a few times the students should be ready to sing along uh so you just play the song and you get all this little smart planet presents We're not gonna do it now but obviously it's really nice to get the students to maybe stand up and sing with you sing and dance or move again if they want to i would i would stand up myself i would do a little bit of dancing i would uh encourage the students to do the same but if some students don't want to do it that's fine i don't i don't make them uh do it okay so activities with songs we've seen uh, tpr total physical response listen and when you hear the animal when you hear family when you hear uh, classroom objects you need to do something you need to stand up you need to shake your body it's it's good that they do something with their body yes you know to to move a little bit and and get out of their chairs um, listen to the song and count the animals the colors the family members uh, you know the first time they listen to the song something that's very general just counting uh, then they have to they can put things in order they can put pictures only pictures they can put uh, words or pictures and words or short sentences uh, the spy is when you give them a set of pictures or words or sentences and they have to identify the, the one that's not in the song stop and draw or stop and mime stop and write yeah you play the song and when you want them to draw something or write something you stop and then you give them a little bit of time to do uh, whatever you want them to do you can ask them more questions about the the song how many children do you see or what color was the window or how big was the dog or you know some other questions to see who was paying attention or not uh, then once you've gone through the song a few times it's a good idea just to give them some pictures and get them to make sentences that are in the song only with the help of the pictures can they remember the sentences and uh, then obviously sing along hmm? okay we're going to do another song but this is from kids box four the students are doing past simple they're a bit older they can read they can write and you know they're not that small anymore so i'm going to uh play a song and the first thing i'm going to do 
is, well, before we do that, I will play the song and say, how many animals can you hear in the song? Yeah, again, this is the students who are nine, so they're a bit older. So listen to the song and how many animals can you hear? Obviously, you're doing animals in the unit. How many animals? Okay, version. I think I'm going to play this. Yeah. The elephants drank, drank, drank. The parrots flew, flew, flew. The dolphins swam, swam, swam. At the zoo, zoo, zoo. The elephants drank, drank, drank. The parrots flew, flew, flew. The dolphins swam, swam, swam. At the zoo, zoo, zoo. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? When you saw, saw, saw them at the zoo, zoo, zoo. <laughs> the monkeys ate, ate, ate. The children drew, drew, drew. The lion slept, slept, slept. At the zoo, zoo, zoo. The monkeys ate, ate, ate. The children drew, drew, drew. The lion slept, slept, slept. At the zoo, zoo, zoo. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? When you saw, saw, saw them at the zoo, zoo, zoo. And you saw, saw, saw them at the zoo, zoo, zoo. So how many animals did you hear? Yes, five animals, yes? With the students, you would elicit which animals did you hear? And you can go through, these are the animals in the unit, but in the song, they only talk about five of them. Uh, so, did you hear what's number one? You would elicit number one is whale, number two. So you would, you would elicit uh, the seven animals and say, did you hear whale? And then I did, with the students this age, I would uh, encourage them to say something like, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't hear whale. Or yes, I did. Something that's you know, a little bit more, a longer answer probably. And then you can say no. Yeah, we didn't hear well. Did you hear dolphin? Yes, we did. Yeah, and then you will you will continue with the rest of the animals having a conversation with uh, the students. Then uh, you can get them to complete some of the lines from the song. Uh, students at this age they should be able to to listen to the song and complete. Uh, you would. It's important to number the gaps so that you can say what's number one can you remember number number one what's number two what do you think number three is uh again give them a little bit of time to to think about the the lines and the song and then you may want to play again let's see maybe from here uh Drink, drink. The parrots flew, flew, flew. The dolphin swam, swam, swam at the zoo, zoo, zoo. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do when you saw, saw, saw them at the zoo, zoo, zoo? <laughs> The monkeys ate, 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 the children. Okay, so you would uh, elicit from the students what's number one. Uh, you can give them some help if you want. You can give them the missing words and now they just have to put them in the right order. But first of all, I wouldn't give them any help to see how much they can do by themselves. 
maybe later give them some help and then eventually okay what's number one and we can complete it together yeah what do you do when you saw 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 them at the zoo 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 um then what can you do you can mime the actions obviously the elephant um and the different animals the, uh you're doing past simple so here we want to look more at the language yeah the different animals elicit the animals and say what did the dolphins do what did the elephants do what did the parrots do you you're practicing past simple so this is the kind of language that you want the students to to use and practice uh hopefully they will say something that the dolphins uh swam or swim you know you 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 might need to help them a little bit so you give them the actions in the past and then they have to match them up you ask what did the dolphins do and then they have to so, to say swam yeah the dolphin swam yes very good yeah and then can they put them in order according to the song yeah what's not you have three lines which is number one two and three again you may want to play that part of the song only so that they can put them in order or you may want to elicit they might remember and again if they can remember fine you can check the answers if they need to listen to the song again you can play that part only yeah and that's the order here i have the mime the miming part because it's good you know for the actions mm -hmm. they they flew they swam another thing that you can do with the students uh, who are in third of primary fourth of primary fifth of primary with teenagers is uh, put this, the sentences in order and they make sentences you know i i was helping them with the beginning of the sentence uh sorry the beginning of the of the song and then it, it gets very repetitive so now i'm gonna give them the pictures for the second half of the song so that they can work it out and and write those lines but the first thing they need to do is they have three pictures and they have to put them in order so i would go and say okay look at this picture here the orange picture what can you see describe the picture which is good for the students this this age again elicit something like in this picture i can see two children drawing pictures of animals uh what can you see in the picture in the middle i can see and get them to describe the pictures properly using complete sentences now listen and number the pictures which is number one is it the monkeys is it the lions is it the children again you would go to uh your song again and play it and you saw saw zoo the monkeys ate, ate, ate The children drew, drew, drew The lions slept, slept, slept At the zoo, zoo, zoo The monkeys ate, ate, ate The children drew, drew, drew I'm gonna go to this one so that they don't see the answers so you would say what's number one yes the monkeys was number two was number three and what did the monkeys do what did the children do what did the lions do uh we are practicing past simple so yeah we're using a song but the whole idea is to practice the questions and the answers and then once they have the song more or less it's time to sing along you can either uh give them the whole song but i like to give them pictures and help so that they they can sing along with the pictures rather than the whole thing so they don't have to read everything but they have to try to remember the the song yes <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
The elephants drank, drank, drank. The parrots flew, flew, flew. The dolphins swam, swam, swam. At the zoo, zoo, zoo. The elephants drank, drank, drank. The parrots flew, flew, flew. The dolphins swam, swam, swam. At the zoo, zoo, zoo. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? When you saw, saw, saw them at the zoo, zoo, zoo. Okay. So you would get the students to sing with you, maybe stand up, sing and mime the actions. And then you, you get them to write their own lines. Maybe you can give them the animals in the unit that are not in the song and get them to use them and say, okay, the whales, you can show them the, the sentence, the, the song again, so that they can say, oh yeah, the elephants drank, the parrots flew. Okay, what about the whales? And they have to come up with actions for the whales, for the snakes, and for the tigers at the zoo. And with this, uh, then they could sing along. I have the karaoke version here and they would uh, sing the wrong song with the music. The whales For me, this is, this is a very nice activity because you give them the chance to, to write the wrong song. Uh, you don't even have to use animals from the unit. They can write their own, uh, they can choose their own animals and write their own song. Okay, a few activities uh, with flashcards to wrap up uh, the session. Flashcards for me are probably the best resource when teaching young learners, when teaching face-to-face and when teaching online. Some activities um, that I do in the classroom, I can do online. Some activities I change a little bit. The good thing about teaching online is that I can still use my flashcards and I can use digital flashcards very easily. So let's uh, have a look at some activities with flashcards. The first one, something that we, I think we do in the classroom where you show the flashcard slowly and the students have to guess, what is it? What is it? And then they have to guess, it's like, oh yes, sports center. Yes, very good. Uh, thunder is the opposite, is where you show it quickly and they have to guess what it is. Uh, maybe, with little ones, you want to show them upside down. Mm, uh, hungry. Maybe you want to say, okay. Uh, say, stop when you see I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And here the students say, stop, I'm hungry. Okay, very good. Uh, the same activities you can do with words. Yeah, you can do the, the first one um, by showing that slowly. Uh, a cup and then get the students to guess and elicit a cup of, a cup of, and then see if they can come up with different options. And then, so yes, yeah, very good. Thunder, the same thing. You can show it quickly. Uh, upside down. 
or stop, yeah? When you see a tiger, you say stop. Stop, okay. Or instead of tiger, you can say when you see an animal, when you see a color, when you see uh, family, how, however you want to use it. You describe and you guess, for example, I've got, I'm going to choose a flashcard and I'm going to describe it to you and you need to guess what it is. This is a place where you go when you want to do a sport. In this place, you can go swimming, you can do exercise, you can play basketball. What is it? Yes, very good, it's a sports center. When you describe it, you can get the students to put their hand up and call out the answer. You can get them to write the answer in their notebook and then check it together by showing them. You can get them to write the answer in the chat and the first student to write the answer is great. But the, thing, the only thing about doing something like that is that you know, the good students will be the ones always writing in the chat. So once in a while is fine, but it's also good to say, okay, write the answer in your notebook. What is it? You describe the picture and then write the answer in the notebook so that every, you can describe it completely because otherwise, you know, the good student will write the answer in the chat really quickly and some of the students might not be able to, to, to know what this is. Mm -hmm. Stand up or touch the floor or point to the floor, do something if you, mm, for example, a stand up if you're wearing uh, and you, you show them clothes or, for example, a stand up if you're thirsty. Thirsty, and then the students would stand up and say, how many people are thirsty? Juan, I'm thirsty, I'm not thirsty. Obviously what you're practicing in this case is, I'm thirsty, I'm not thirsty, I'm hungry, I'm not hungry. So you want the students to stand up or stay sitting down, and if they're sitting down, say, I'm not thirsty, great. If they stand up, you say, I'm thirsty, great. Stand up if... And now they have to make a sentence, uh, I'm hungry, I'm not hungry. Again, it could be a stand up or it could be touch your head, clap your hands, uh, shake your body, make a true sentence. Yeah, again, I just show them a picture and they have to say, in this case, either I'm hungry, I'm not hungry. They have to make a true sentence. Uh, I I never go to the sports center or I go to the sports center twice a week. They have to make a true sentence about themselves using the, the picture. Uh, this is a strong, so they can say, I'm a strong, I'm not very strong, I'm cold, I'm not cold, uh, I get up at eight o'clock, you know, whatever you show them. Uh, brother, uh, I haven't got any brothers. Uh, they just have to make a sentence using the flashcard. What's in the box? Again, uh, you can get a box, or I'm gonna get this uh, book. You can you can hide it in the box or in the book. You say, oh, what is it? What's in the box? It's nice to have a, a real box. Uh, what's in the book? And then they have to guess. Obviously, you you usually have a set of six, eight flashcards, so. They, they have to guess and then you say, you can give them uh, some help. What's in the box? <gasps> oh, yes, yes, I'm sleepy. Very good. I'm tired. Uh, odd one out is you show them three. Well, let's start with, yeah, with three. And one is somehow different, yeah? Which one is different? And then again, they have to put their hand up or they have to write the answer in the notebook. Yes, a sports center because the other says like, I'm, they're talking about feelings, I'm hungry, I'm sleepy, and a sports center is not a feeling. You can do it with three. I usually start with three and then have maybe 
four. And again, you shuffle the cards and then you go one at a time. The students look at the pictures and once you've gone through the four pictures, they put their hand up and they explain uh, which is the odd one out. And if they can explain why, much better. What's missing is very similar. You have three. You go through the three cent through the three pictures, and then you show two. Which one is missing? And they have to put their hand up. They have to write the answer in the notebook. In the chat. So what's missing? Yes, I'm tired. Uh, you can have what's missing with three. You can have what's missing with four, maybe five, if you want to make it more, more challenging. Remember that all these activities you can do with the words as well. What's in the box, the odd one out, or what's missing, yeah? So here you're practicing more reading, which will help them with the writing. Watch and remember, again, I start with two, very simple, and I show them two and they need to remember, and they need to put their hand up and they have to tell you the two pictures. But then you have three pictures. And they have to put their hand up and remember the three pictures. I'm hot, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. And then another one, and then you have four. Again, the aim is, can you remember the four Pictures, put your hand up and you can show them again. Yeah, you can show them maybe a third time. The whole point is that even though they're not speaking at this point, they're going through the words in their head and that's, that's, that's what we want. Yeah, that they're kind of like, oh, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm hot. And then, you know, they might speak a little bit, but they're thinking about the language throughout the activity and since we have pictures and words you can do matching activities yeah you can say okay you can show them a picture and when you say the word you tell me a stop so you show a picture if it's if they don't match they don't say anything you show another one and when they see I'm tired, I'm asleep, it's a stop. Yeah, they go together. You, you can also do this uh, kind of the same exercise with, with on, the, on the slides. You have a set of flashcards, uh, you go through them. Obviously you're doing a sports, the students are becoming familiar with the language and you say, what is it like? This is like what's in the box, yeah? Uh, but obviously here they have the seven pictures so they can, they can see them and they can guess. I think it's important that you give them some help to come up with better answers. I think it, this is for me one of the best things about technology that we can really help the students to become more accurate because I give them everything here. They know the language more or less, the actions, and it's like, I think it's, uh, well, the language is swim, play basketball, play football. So I think it's swim. I think it's ride a bike. And then you take that away so that they don't get the help all the time. They get the help to get it right from the beginning. And the answer, if they want to speak, is I think it's. If they don't say this, they don't speak. Once it's clear, you don't need to have it on the screen. And then the students will put their hand up and say, I think it's play tennis. And then you show them. Again, what is it? What's in the box? I think it's very good. Uh, look, look at the pictures for one minute. You give the, the students one minute. You can give them three pictures instead of seven, if it's a bit too much. Uh, give them a minute to go through the pictures. The first time you do this activity, the students will do it very badly. But once they get the, the point, they will get much better. Then you hide the seven pictures and say, what's number one? And they will go, oh, oh I don't know. And then they will guess, say, yes. 
if, if they get it right, you say, what's number two? Yes, play the guitar. What's number three? Play food. If they get it wrong, you say, oh, sorry, it's not swim. Number four is not swim. Number four is? Yes, play tennis. So then you start all over again. What's number one? And then you say, okay, look at the pictures for one minute. Now they know that they have to remember the pictures in the right order. And then you will hide them again and say, okay, what's number one? A students can put their hand up and you guys, okay, Juan, what's number one? Uh, play basketball. Yeah, very good. Okay, Maria, what's number two? Yes, play the guitar. And the aim is that together as a group, they remember the seven pictures. So they don't have to remember all, but Juan might say number one, Maria will say number two, and together they remember the seven pictures. This is a challenge, class students against teacher. But the real challenge is for the students individually to remember the seven pictures. So Juan, can you remember the seven pictures? And Juan said, oh yeah. Okay, Juan, tell me, what's number one? Play basketball. Yes. Juan, what's number two? Juan, what's number three? Okay, sorry, uh, Maria. And again, give them another minute so that, and at this point, the students will be kind of really paying attention, trying to remember as much as they can. Like I said, you might want to start with three pictures instead of, uh, which is uh, simple. You would, uh, you know, you make a copy of this slide and then you get rid of this and you would have three pictures, yeah? So it was number one, was number two, was number three. Yeah, so you may want to start with three, and once the students get the point, uh, you can uh, go to seven. But the real challenge for students is to remember the seven pictures in that order. Okay, uh, if you want the students to pay attention to the written form, again, you can give them the flashcard, the pictures, and give them the word, and they just have to tell you the number. They need to read. Say, okay, Maria, say, Maria, swim, number five. Yes, very good. Okay, Anna. Anna will say, ride the bike. Ride the bike is number seven. Very good. Okay, Jose, play foot, play basketball, play basketball is number one. Great, yeah? So you can combine pictures and words. So to wrap up the session, uh, we started with the picture dictation where you imagine the kind of picture that you want the students to draw, coloring and label. You go through the colors, you go uh, through the, the vocabulary a little bit and you dictate the picture. You can either give them a lot of details the tree is behind the house or draw a tree, whatever you want. The tree, draw a big tree or draw a tree and they decide whether the tree is big or small. Then they can color in the pictures. Again, they can color in the pictures as they wish or you can tell them the colors. You can say, okay, the house is blue and red and the car is yellow. Or what I like to do is I like to ask one of the students, Maria, what color is the car? And Maria will say, the car is yellow. She's got to make a complete sentence. The car is yellow. And then we say, I say to everybody, yes. Okay, color the car yellow. Again, I like to do this because they all go at the same pace. If you say, okay, color in the picture, you know, some students will be done in two seconds. And some students uh, would like to take 10 minutes or 20 minutes to do it. By, by doing it like this, you can more or less follow a pace that gives enough time uh, for everybody to, to color in and it's not too fast, too slow. Songs, loads of activities, uh, include some TPR, move around, a stand up. Uh, today, I wanted to show you some very basic uh, count the colors in the song, listen, how many colors can you hear? Listen, how many animals? How many family members can you hear? Uh, then play with pictures, words, and sentences. Depending on the age of the students, you may want to use only pictures, or you can include pictures and words, or you can include short sentences as well. And they put them in order, they complete the sentences, 
uh, they, they, they write their own lines, maybe with all their students, and obviously sing along with the karaoke version or with the song itself. And then flashcards, lots of guessing, showing slowly, showing really quickly, matching pictures to words, hiding things. And very important, tr try and get them to use their memory. Give them three pictures in order, hide them. What's number one? Because that's when their brain is really active, yeah? Or show them four pictures and they need to remember you know, the four pictures. Uh, the, we want the students to get engaged and be active. That's why it's a good idea to alternate speaking activities with drawing to give them a little bit of a break or with writing, because if we do everything orally, it's really tiring for the students and the teacher. So when we plan the lesson, we want to make sure that it flows nicely and we give those students those active breaks they don't fall asleep they just oh, they change the pace and now i have a few minutes to draw uh, or to to draw the pictures or to write the words on my piece of paper remember next week i will be doing a session on using google slides for me it's much easier than powerpoint i've been using powerpoint for a long time and the last few years i've been using google slides and in the session next week on Wednesday the 15th at the same time, I will show you some basic tricks to design the slides so that you can hide things, you can make things appear or disappear, uh, and, and some tricks that are very useful when planning and teaching online. This is it for me for today. I really hope you can put some of the activities into practice. Uh, you will have a link to the session on our Facebook. So please remember to check our Facebook because you will find a lot of information there. And if you leave us a message, that would be wonderful. We would like to hear uh, from you. We would like to get your impressions and your feedback so that we can plan more lessons, more sessions for the future. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.